Hey folks, just a quick video today to cover the leaking supercapacitor issue that afflicts some Fluke 189s, 287s, and 289s. So this is my Fluke 289, and thanks to a fellow farm member on BLF, Glenn, he pointed out to me that this particular model had a problem with the leaking supercapacitor. Now, the supercapacitor, it's located in this section, which I'll get to later, but and that supercapacitor helps you retain data like the date and the time. I noticed that every time I changed out the battery, so I'm going to simulate that right now, flukes off, just kept wondering why I had to keep resetting the date time. It's just one of those things, when it happens, you're like, okay, I need to address this, right? But then you forget about it after you change the battery because it doesn't really bother you. It wasn't that big a deal. Here you're going to see, it says, attention, error, date and time need to be reset. And that drove me nuts, man. I was just like, really? On a $600 plus? digital multimeter you gotta reset the date and time every time it's just like that's crazy but again just one of those things that just never really bothered me to the degree where I had to go online and research it so big thank you to Glenn for pointing that out I've actually made contact with Fluke go online fill out RMA and then just get a sent in because these products are warranted for a lifetime and I think if I'm not mistaken they sent back a message that says products that are warranty for a lifetime I think they extend it up to seven years past the actual end of life this particular model is actually still in production, so no concerns there at all. But anyway, let's get into the innards. So here I have taken off the back of my Fluke 289. There was a protective plastic cover that actually goes above this. It's just one screw to remove that, but the part in question here is actually right there. That's the super cap, and here's a close-up shot of that. Mine has actually started corroding. You'll notice that there's brown crud around the circumference of this super cap. If you do suffer from the same issue and you want to take a look at the capacitor, one thing of note is that these screws that hold the back cover have extremely broad threads. As you're going to re-screw it back on, I advise you to just actually back it out first until it clicks and then screw it in because it has a very specific pattern given how broad it is. And if you don't catch it just right, you're actually going to be threading it again, new ones. And I highly advise that against because at the front here is a clear plastic and to me that looks to be a little bit more brittle than say whatever else these may be going into so thus again I strongly recommend that you be very careful about the way you thread this back in obviously again do this only at your own discretion all right that covers the issue so if you're having problems with your Fluke 289 or I believe the 1 series get in contact with Fluke fill out the form get it sent in and hopefully it'll be back better than new and the interesting thing is that I believe on the form somewhere I saw that it actually says that not just the repair was covered but I think calibration although without the data I guess meaning you don't get a certificate or whatnot but at least they will recalibrate the equipment so that's a nice plus because I've had this for a few years now certainly wouldn't hurt to get this recalibrated. As part of FTC disclosure the Fluke 289 was purchased for my personal use. Thanks again for watching.